This gathering is really nothing without you, so we'd really like you to get involved in asking questions, commenting. We want it to be a big conversation, uh, not just people talking up here on stage. Um, because we're doing this as a hybrid event, we're using Mentimeter, which is um, giving the opportunity for people that are at home to join in the conversation as well. And we're asking the people in the cinema to do the same. Um, there's the information for Menti. You can take a screenshot and it will come up. It's really straightforward. You just go to, um, uh, to Menti, put in the code 37947802 or scan the QR code and open the Q&A section and just ask your question. There'll be someone sat in this corner reading out your questions or your comments, um, obviously within time, time limits. Um, if you're struggling with this, please ask someone from the team at the delegate desks and we'll, we'll give you a hand. I just wanted to flag up that we've got um, some photographers. We've got Sham and us who are taking pictures and also um, Sandra will be taking some pictures, so if, if you don't want your picture taken, just go and have a quiet word with them and they'll make sure they don't take pictures of you. Um, finally, a plug for uh, Duncan Speakman's award-winning, fabulous, immersive audio walking tour, Only Expansion, which you can um, join in. It's a really nice opportunity for you to see a little bit of Bristol whilst you're here. Um, and also, um, engage with some of the themes of the piece, um, which are about what it means to live in the current planet, which is um, in crisis, obviously. And on that bombshell, it gives me <laughs> great pleasure to introduce our fabulous CEO, Claire Reddington, who's going to kick things off and tell you a bit more about past, present, future. And she'll be joined by Mark Cosgrove, our cinema curator. Thank you very much. Enjoy the next few days. everyone. Yay, there's people in Watershed. It's so lush. Um, hi at home. I'm sorry you're not in Watershed. It's so lush. Um, but I hope you'll have a really good day today also. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Watershed. I'm going to share some of the pleasure and pain of lockdown. I'm sure you've all got your own stories. We can do those in the bar. Um, so... This is Watershed, we're in this building. Um, we were the first co-working space in the city, maybe the world. Um, this is our building back when it was Victorian or something. Um, we, <laughs> we were, um, we were uh, uh, a co-working space for independent merchants. So tiny little people working on boats. We weren't associated with the slave trade, but quite a long time after that was present in the city. But it was people bringing lots of different types of of goods for the hospitality industry through. So all of the other sheds like this in the city were owned by large kind of wealthy business people, but ours was for um, the little people, which makes me really happy. Um, a lot of what came through was also um, rushes um, for the blind school that was behind us. Um, and so, so we've always been about collaboration, about the importance of space and about what happens when people get together and share stuff. We were the first uh, media centre in the UK back in 1982. The founders of Watershed thought about what would happen when the media and the entertainment world came together. That didn't happen quite so much back in 1982, but certainly that's been a theme in how Watershed has understood itself and the kinds of risks and activities Watershed has done. Some of these are encapsulated in the pervasive media studio, which you're really welcome to visit whilst you're here. It's across the bar and down the other side of the corridor. And I'm going to tell you a little about, a bit about the studio, and Mark is going to pick up more about our cultural cinema programme. So you have an international reputation for creative technology. It's about 14 years old now. We produce cutting edge creative products, globally leading research, and we leverage millions of pounds for the region. So we're a partnership between the two universities in Bristol, University of Bristol, UWE and Watershed. Um, and for that reason, we're pretty exceptional and people come from all around the world to work out how on earth we managed to collaborate for so long um, with such kind of equality um, and mutuality. We're about commerce and culture, another thing that makes us different to loads of workspaces. We put people making money and people making meaning next to each other. We gift both the space, but we ask them to share their ideas. It's about openness and it's about generosity. 
And people come to us that wouldn't find support elsewhere. Their idea hasn't really formed properly. It's too early stage. It's too out there. We're the kind of people who love that stuff. Um, and after a lot of support and, um, and working with artists and getting them to share and getting them to engage with the world, we create things like Anagram's VR work Goliath, which won um, the prize in Venice last year, the, ju the jury prize, and Duncan Speakman's Only Expansion, which you've heard about and which you can do, I urge you to do, it's amazing, which was the winner of the London Film Festival's Best Immersive and XR Award. So things with tiny seeds, things which wouldn't be recognizable now, start life, and become something else. In the recent times, um, we had the COVID Future Themes Award for the studio, and we funded work on pleasure, on chronic illness, on crypt technology, on biopiracy, and seed colonialism. So we're, we follow the energy of the community of artists that we work with, and we're globally connected. So our partnerships right now are in Lagos, Tokyo, Durban, and Seoul, creative hubs that we regularly hang out with, swap ideas with, and co-produce. Alongside this, we've got Rife, a digital platform um, led by young people about developing their talent and unleashing their creative voices into the world. And it's a stepping stone from Rife into our cultural cinema program and into the world of the Pervasive Media Studio. That's our background. So, like many people here, we closed for COVID. I'm not going to rehearse the pain and the trauma um, of, of those years. We've all got our own. We're all in it still. So um, it was pretty shit. Um, if you're really nice to me, I'll share you the email that a man sent me when we closed for a week for staff rest. And he wrote to tell me that I wasn't running a nuclear reactor um, and that I should get the staff back to work straight away. So that was a pleasure. Um, but actually, what I want to talk today is about some of the opportunities. I want to I guess, count our blessings and think about the things that COVID unlocked for us. So COVID gifted us time, not for everyone and not all the time. There was plenty of juggling, there was rest, there was homeschooling, there was pain and there was work to do. Half the organisation didn't close and most people were not on furlough. But without the magnetic pull of a building, we could build time to look deeply at ourselves to think about our practice and about equity in new ways. We learned that we'd set inclusion work in Watershed, which we've been doing a long time through our cross-organisational inclusion work, too high. It was held at strategy and exec level, and it wasn't finding its meaning with people in their jobs. So we brought in Katie and Aisha, our inclusion associates, to train us and to work with every single team about what inclusion means for them. We want measurable, um, achievable things that we can share and look back on and hold ourselves to account with. We looked at who we are and how we might change the demographic of Watershed. So we've reimagined recruitment. Um, there's a number of steps that are laid out. I think that last this way up, there was a panel on some of the things that we've been doing. Um, it's really changing who Watershed is by sharing the questions of the interview packs, by meeting everyone that applies, which, you know, it's really challenging for staff, making enough time to meet everyone, but it's brilliant. We've turned ourselves into detectives rather than gatekeepers, and we've found new ways to bring people into the organization. So all of our approach to recruitment is on our inclusion um, blogs uh, on our website. And we've created new ways to think about what balance and belonging means at Watershed, moving away from demographic benchmarking and into an intersectional understanding of who we are and how people's lived experience and culture shows up for them in work, how it influences their experience of us and what we need to change. We know that we've got work to do around pay transparency and around how decisions are made. And that's come from this deep and serious understanding of ourselves in terms of balance and belonging. We've found new ways to work with artists. This is the work of Lucy Turner. Um, she's made an absolutely beautiful visual on the downstairs of Watershed's Undershed. Do go down and have a look at it. Um, we've worked with Adi Adeline looking at structural racism in our collaborations and understanding how the governance of our projects needs to change if we're to make change on the ground. 
we began a, pro a program called Equitable Futures, where we sought to invert the power dynamics of traditional futuring processes so that we could come from a trauma-informed point of view and bring others into thinking about a fairer, more equitable imagining of what Watershed could be. And we used some of the learning that we'd taken from Creative Producers International, which was a three-year program running just about up to um, COVID, to, um, to think about hybridity, to run new types of online programs. So we launched Bristol Arts Channel, I think a month into COVID, which was a sort of online digital channel for the city. If you look back, you'll see the amazing cooking show I hosted where I teach you how to make watershed nachos. Um, <laughs> And uh, the, the chef, Chris, teaches you how to do that. I just sort of get excited. Um, and, and we spent time with our international communities. So rather than parachuting in to do work with them on a project basis, we hung out together and we worked, what, we worked out what each of us wanted to do and where each of us wanted to lead. And all of that work, I guess, brings us to ask ourselves questions about growth. Before lockdown, we had a two-phase capital plan, which included a massive new workspace at the back of the building that you can see. And that project is on pause, perhaps permanently. Zoe, who some of you will meet, who's leading our work on climate justice, says the most environmentally friendly building is the one that it doesn't need to be built, i.e. the one that we've got. So the questions we now have to ask ourselves around how do we put our building and assets at better use of the community? How can we be more responsible with what we have? How can we focus on what we're good at, making our collaborations and connections richer, deeper, and more permeable? How do we get out of the way of others and perhaps even do less? And how the hell do we find the KPIs that we believe in that will articulate all of that? A triple bottom line story of value that works for us and GASP also our funders. So Maddie teed up the toilets conversation. <laughs> Um, I'm going to preface this with saying there are many people who really appreciate the fact that during lockdown we converted our main toilets into being all genders. There's lots of people on a daily basis who think that's great, but obviously they don't write to us. Um, <laughs> so my main job is uh, answering questions about toilets. That's true of the front of house team and the comms team as well. It's all we do. Um, and... <laughs> The concerned of Clifton think our new toilets are dangerous, discriminatory, and disgusting. And I guess in saying what Watershed or who Watershed is for, everyone, we've kind of drawn a front line and that has sort of manifested itself in our toilets. <laughs> we're, we're going to get new toilets next year. God, I can't wait for that comms campaign. But anyway. Um, but the specifics of the toilets probably don't matter. This year's toilets is probably next year's making too much noise in the cinema. People love Watershed for being inclusive until it shows up in a way that impacts on their experience of the building. I'm going to read you an email that we had quite recently. It's not that I'm fixed in my ways. In, <laughs> indeed, I'm an aging hippie with abundant tolerance of all sorts of ideas. I see myself as liberal. Nevertheless, <laughs> this is a step too far. It's our 40th birthday next year. We're going to undergo a public discussion around who we are, how we are, and what we are. And there's a piece of work for us to do to invite audiences on the journey to say what we are and what we believe in with our chest and invite them to come with us. But we also realize that not all of our audiences are going to do that. And that's OK. Mr. Nevertheless has been here for years, but he might not be back. And it's painful, but a conscious uncoupling is probably a key part of our inclusion story, as well as the work that we've got to do. We need to say more clearly what our values are, how we want them to show up in this building, um, and invite people to go with us on that journey. The beating heart of Watershed is our cinema, the magical, democratic art form that connects ideas and stories in Bristol all around the world. So Mark is going to talk a little bit about that. But I'm just going to remind you that according to the brochure, Mark is now the CEO of Watershed. 
So, if you've got any concerns or questions about toilets, he also is really happy to take those. <laughs> Claire was just joking about that last part, by the way. <laughs> I don't want the emails, trust me. Um, Claire also has uh, two whistles round that lovely necklace, and she's going to blow them if I start if I start going on, if I start rambling. And I've been told by Maddie as well that I've got to be quick, and I've already wasted a minute. So um, I'm just going to read it as bullet points um, rather than head off in different directions. So the, the past two years um, have been uh, painful all round. It's certainly given me um, cause to think about the role of cinema when cinemas were closed, but yet everybody was watching films. Um, but as we reopened, um, and you know, events like this, and events like meeting people um, coming into the building, um, for me, I realised the importance and significance of the place of cinema. Not just the auditorium watching the films, but actually the place, the social place, um, the conversations that happened before and after. Um, and for me, there's clearer water um, between cinemas as commercial exploitation and cinemas as cultural venues and social connectors. And these are some of the, some examples. Um, you know, in, in the past couple of months, we've had cables and cameras, um, which is ta um, ta a takeover of Watershed called Inspired, which was um, promoting uh, new, diverse um, filmmaking talent from um, African Caribbean backgrounds. Um, we had Africa Eye, um, which was uh, a fantastic event, um, bringing together sort of live music in the in the bar, but also you know obviously screenings. And in one of the screenings, I've started heading off in the direction. Um, one of the screenings was a was a documentary on music from Mali, um, and when we screened that after it uh, by Zoom, we had the one of the musicians and the filmmaker come into Cinema Three by Zoom from Bamako. Uh, and this incredible dialogue happened about identity and music and culture um, and an incredible exchange happened which was fantastic. We also screened Rooted in Bristol which is a half hour brilliant documentary about allotment tears um, from African Caribbean heritage um, and again another conversation happened about identity, about place um, that was obviously focused on, on Bristol. Um, here is Lola McKinnon, who's MA curation student. We have a placement here from UE, which uh, University of West of England, um, and that uh, provides we provides a training um, in cultural practice, um, and we get a new voice that delivers a program. Their project is delivered, and she did a brilliant program on myth and masculinity around the power of the dog and some other films. And these are examples um, which are central to our practice. Um, about making meaning meaningful. And I think this is a really important space that, again, distinguishes us. It's about that meaning is all around. It's how it becomes meaningful. Um, and it's through partnerships, like the ones I've described, that you really get the richness. Um, but also, there are, it's platforms for voices, for a plurality of voices and a range of voices. And I'm really delighted that, um, as part of the Cultural Recovery Fund, that we've got a pot of money to um, commission three new uh, curatorial associates um, they'll be working with me and with Watershed over um, the next few months, exploring different areas. So these were three people, Malaika Kagodi, who's here, um, Adam, Adam Murray, who we work with on Black Horror, and Karen Alexander, who has been a, a, a supporter and programmer in different aspects, particularly with, with Cinema Rediscovered. And they are going to, we, we've got them the space to develop their thinking, to give them space to think rather than constantly deliver, but it will result in programmes. But again, it's that sort of plurality um, of voices that we can platform in a venue like Watershed. Um, so um, one of the things that happened last week with the Hub members meet up, um, and it was on, on Zoom, and some of the people are, are here, which is great, Hub Southwest. And what came across in the meeting was kind of levels of anxiety, which I completely share, particularly given that this new variation has, a, has, has arrived. But there's a kind of anxieties around audience behaviours, there's anxieties around um, audiences coming back, there's anxieties about relearning our trade, you know, things have changed, you know, what works, what doesn't. But these examples from some of the members really struck me. Uh, one was Purbeck Film Festival and their screening of There Is No Evil, the Iranian film, which um, opens in a couple of weeks. 
and they got somebody from an Iranian specialist who was actually Iranian themselves from the university to do a talk in, at the Purbeck Film Festival. Fantastic audience size, fantastic engagement about the film, um, and engagement about what was happening in, in Iran. Um, in Exeter, Shogun Assassin that we had done here um, as part of BFI Japan uh, with DJ Chiba doing a, a, a live remix score here screening there, um, but it took it to Exeter and that was a, um, Claire from um, Exeter Phoenix was saying that that was a fantastic event that the audience really engaged with. Um, and then in Plymouth, um, Anna is doing work with local filmmakers and artists um, and that again has been, they've got larger audiences with that. And these are examples of pl local place based areas that we can really make a difference. And something which positions us as different, unique and distinct from the commercial mainstream. And that unique, distinct difference has been captured brilliantly in the four-year AHRC research programme project Beyond the Multiplex. And I hope that policymakers and funders will take on board these findings and future thinking and planning. And we're going to be talking about that um, in the next session. But enjoy the conference, enjoy Watershed, and I hope you get to experience some of Bristol. The plinth is about two minutes that way. Where where the statue was dumped is about a minute that way, and there's a plaque that you can read. And I think the statue itself might still be being displayed in M Shed, which is five minutes that way as well. Thank you. Thanks, Mark and Claire. That was great. Uh, we've now got a five-minute break. Um, it's just a comfort break. You can just sit here and chat. Um, or uh, go out if you need to and then we'll be back as Mark said for Beyond the Multiplex in Cinema 1 or if you've had enough of people talking at you uh, you can go and watch some films in uh, Cinema 3 that's BFI Network backed shorts um, great thank you very much